charging fourteen dollars a month to get us that kind of shit. So as my knowledge is, I believe the Zillow probably does the same thing we did. Yes, so it's we're not recommitting the same thing. Yeah. And we, we do know that Helen has a public provider that happens for the city runs their second service and they have that problem switching, you know, getting more people to participate. And the commission charges would be like this. Yes, sir. And this is question too about the 11th hour deal that we do with it. And public works part of the purpose pilot program together. It was good the idea that it would be a public response to folks. But as it evolved through the pilot program, it became apparent that in terms of the data that we're getting back, that it could work as an private option. And we are supported both in the degrees and um, in the, of either direction. We did sell there's more flexibility in a private option. For example, let's say that we or any prices of, let's say it was a, a public option, and we say the price can be $13 a month, and all of a sudden we said that we pay $40 a month and ship the material cost of 120 then we'd have to come to you and get permission to have a raise for Whereas in a private transaction with private customers, you can still directly with the client and say, you know, it's going to be X amount, and are you in or not? And, and it's just a simple more um, molding process. So we're supportive of either way. And we're also having sense to some suggestions by even some of the commissioners here that maybe it should have private programs and, and some services to help that way as well. So, yeah. Mr. Sorge, so the motion we just get to as amended, I make a motion that we. Uh, Stand Council Bill number 15 13, mm -hmm. final reading as intended. Second. Uh, so for the mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with the recycling, but in the garbage collection itself. Up in Centerville, there's been a lot of discussion about some of the alleys up there being uh, hard to get to. Grace probably realized that there's one alley that runs. One block off, or half a block off of uh, Main Street, of Center Street. Right now, the one person that lives on that, right in the middle, is another lady. Put your garbage out right behind your house that she has forever. You guys don't drive up that alley. So they actually do walk up and collect the garbage. Now, that won't happen with this new system. I guess if we pass this and there's all kinds of problems like that, so the pilot program has not taken place, where do we sit down? These people up there are just stuck, and that's it. Well, it's almost individual visits. You know, the, the reason that we've done this so long is we've tried to accommodate them. You know, things like that. And, and in the pilot program, we have the thing that the, the, the automated system, efficiency comes with straight down the street, straight down the alley. But I'm sure that we can make, and, and, and Denny and Jim have talked about that too. There are some tough places in my town to put a. You know, in certain circumstances, you may have a snowy day, you may have to go collect half a dozen um, automated parts and bring them somewhere in that and do that. But you will have to do that because uh, as a whole, it will be more efficient. In certain sections, it's more efficient. Where could it And the reason I bring this up is I yeah, just hope that there's some leeway and some work in the people. Like center is going to be a tough area. As long as that's understood. Uh, I found an email uh, I was reading earlier today from, I don't remember where it came from or anything, but the person mentioned that, mentioned that there was two people lying in the truck and there was a can of garbage here. They did garbage over there, so they had to get out and put it in the things like that. 
Does that going to kind of become obvious to have two people in the vehicle? Mm -hmm. Or is it just going to be the one? I don't know if I was hoping that you'd get a copy of my answer to that. Oh, but there's a reply. We didn't have to make a long story short. Right now, on this this man is on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. We've got 400 automated cans on Monday, but it's 540 stops. Oh, okay. So there's 140 extra stops. Okay. And so the, we left the two guys there to go back and forth to prove the trucks because we got 400 automated and 140 others. And so uh, my answer was that this man just we just happened to be together at the time, and then the automated arm picked up the extra bag and. We, but I mean, the efficiency of it is no, you will not have to do that. Wherever it is, I was thinking that if there's actually two people in, in a truck, especially in some of these areas like my center street, and there's a longer ride for it, that somebody could just, like he's collecting like others, they can go over and do some of these camps. And maybe that's how you adjust. That might be on bad days. I mean, you just said the next but I do think that the whole key of the for the And we're talking about this efficiency and investment, like we're going to have to have everything on one side of the alley to make it room for it. Is that correct? That's the most efficient. It's not written itself. So we should just kind of. I mean, there's certainly you can easily go up one up the alley for the back. Mm -hmm. It's just not as efficient. What we tried to do is keep it in the alley if it was in the alley before, just trying not to disrupt the residents. So we tried to keep it, not have it bring it to the street in all cases. Um. Jim, I, I had a question from someone up in the um, 15th, 14th, 15th, 16th. Do you um, do garbage up there? Yeah. yeah. And um, they're worried about the retaining wall and where to put their, if, when they get the cans and where to put um, the cans and, and the, the narrowness of the streets and, and all of that and how to lift them over that retaining wall. Um, how, would, how are you going to deal with, with that situation? Well, it's not only the exact address and the exact behavior, it's all perception. I look at those streets, they're the easy ones. Okay. Because the garbage, we crash it out of the back. It's most of the most part, hey, so the trucks just going behind the houses. You know, 15th Street, they go up on 16th and 15th Street, they go back. But that's where the retaining wall is, though. Well, generally, Cindy, the canton. Well, actually, north of the retaining wall, obviously, generally. I think most of that would be Everyone check in, please. Let me move my cheese. Oh, I guess you have to wait for oh. Colleen to turn on the machine. Matt. Yeah. 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 Matt. <laughs> Can everyone check in, please? Chair, would you grab the Got it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I missed your call. Oh, Cheryl. Did you hit fall? Thank you. Hey, Dennis. Thanks. 
Waiting for my vice chair to arrive. There he is. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Butte Silver Boat Council of Commissioners Committee, the whole meeting of September 9th, 2015. Could we have roll call, please? We have nine present, one presiding, and two absent. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, please let the record show that Commissioners McDonough and Morgan are excused this evening. Would you join Mr. Commissioner Henderson in the pledge and the prayer? Almighty God, we implore you, look upon us and guide us this night. We make decisions which so greatly affect our community of Butte Silver Bowl. Direct our thoughts, words, and deeds so that we please you and best serve our fellow citizens. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, report of the chair, just a couple of items. Um, I see that we have a 9-11 memorial parade on Friday. It begins at the Butte Mall. This is at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, and it's a, a wonderful event that we have to uh, honor our fallen in the 9-11 tragedy in New York City and I think that it's a it's a good thing that all uh, communities have something to do with this there are a lot of these that occur to keep this in them in our minds uh, and on Monday at the corner of Park and Main nine o'clock in the morning there's going to be a, a cornerstone event at the new Northwestern Energy Building and we're all invited and I think that anybody that is invited to come should be a a great event, and I believe that uh, they're planning on having the building done in December. Matt, was there something you wanted to say? Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner, members of the public, there's also a groundbreaking tomorrow at noon for the new Fairfield Inn project at that site uh, over on, I believe it's Howard. Floral no, it's not Howard, it's floral. Uh, floral, floral, excuse you me. just stole my thunder. That was my third item. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> hey, we can't say enough about uh, groundbreaking and new buildings go up. It's uh, going to be a good event, too. And that's at noon, I believe, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, without any further ado on the report of the chair, let's go on to section one. This is a bid opening, communication number 15 411. Kristen Rosa, Administrator, Tax Increment Financing Industrial District, which is better known as the TIFID requesting council's authorization to hold a bid opening on September 9th, 2015 for dust control equipment. County attorney, do we have proof of publication? Uh, Madam chair, we do have proof of publication. Um, for both bids. There was uh, two publications, however, they weren't six days in between the first and second publication. Uh -oh. for this particular bid opening. Should we ask our county attorney what, the, uh, what that means, if that's appropriate, or does that cause us any grief? <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, it does not comply with the state law that requires you to have your publications six days in between. Well, that there was only one bid, but publication is not in order. <laughs> I, again, I defer to our legal counsel on this matter. Um, Madam Chair, I think we'll have to re-advertise and uh, postpone the bid opening until we do the proper publication. <coughs> I, I don't know what to say other than deferring to our legal counsel. I don't know, if, you know, I'm certainly not a lawyer, and I don't know that we have to follow state law and follow the rules, but I think we'll have to defer to our county attorney. So. Okay. Thank you, Kristen. Okay, we will hold that in advance uh, till the next opportunity to have the bid opening. Section uh, Commissioner Anderson. 
Uh, in the communication 15411, it asked, specifically asked for it to hold a bid opening uh, for today. Would it be better if they did submit a new communication? County Attorney Joyce, would that be appropriate to do so? Okay. And All right. If I could, then I'd like to make yeah, a motion. We're not on the communication. What's that? Yeah, yeah we're not on the we're communication. We're just canceling yet. this. Or are we just canceling it then? Or I thought you wanted to. I, I believe that we should just. The communication is further than the agenda. Oh, okay. okay. What's the pleasure? Communications farther down the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we'll address it at that time. Thank okay. you, and that will be placed on file. We'll just ask for a new communication. <laughs> Section two, bid opening communication number 15-413, Jeffrey L. Miller, Director of Butte Silver Bow Fire Services, requesting council's authorization to hold a bid opening on September 9th, 2015, in regards to a new 2015 16 1500 GPM custom class A pumper. Do we have proof of publication? County Attorney Joyce. <laughs> Madam Chair, there is proof of publication and it does appear to be in order. Thank you. The floor is yours, Chief Miller. Madam Chair, members of the council, uh, it appears that we received two uh, sealed bids. The first is from uh, Pierce Manufacturing, 2600 American Drive, Appleton, Wisconsin. Could have given you some bigger scissors, Jeff. Yeah, it's a very good sealed bid, very well sealed. Out of chair. And Madam Chair, there is a bid bond in the amount of 10% from a licensure to company that does appear to be in order. Thank you. Chief Miller. Madam Chair, members of the commission, this uh, bid from Pierce Manufacturing is, uh, it looks like the, the base bid is $531,714. And then there's a series of discounts that are on the list. Uh, less discount for chassis progress payment in the amount of 293795 That discount amount is $8,814. Uh, less payment at time of completion at the factory discount, uh, $6,171. Uh, less 100% prepayment discount of $13,935. Uh, subtotal including all prepayment discounts is $502,000. $794. Uh, there's a less customer transport discount of $4,500 and a less performance bond requirement of $1,432. Uh, total unit price, including all available discounts, is $496,862. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Commissioner Walker, to make a motion to uh, refer this back to the firm. Oh, excuse me. One more bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there was just one. Excuse me. Uh, my apologies. Madam Chair, members of the council, the second bid, uh, sealed bid, is from General Fire Apparatus, 3904 East Trent Avenue in Spokane, Washington. Thank you. 
and the fire chief do public works county attorney choice to find a bid bond, huh? County Attorney Joyce. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't see a bid bond. Is that requirement in your... Okay. Well, without a bid bond, then it's not a valid bid, correct? Okay. Anything more to be said about this before I entertain a motion? Okay. Madam Chair, members of the commission, I guess the request at this time would be to refer the bids back to uh, the fire department for further review for a recommendation. Okay. Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, at this time, I'd like to refer the single bid back to fire services and have them report back to council. Second. We have a motion and a second to refer the bids back to the fire services department to come back to this body with their recommendation. Anything on the question? Commissioner Palmer. Madam Chair, I'd just like to uh, re remind the council that all bids on bid opening should be referred to the Public Works Department in conjunction with the fire department because that's a policy this council was made years ago to make sure all the bids are looked at equally for all of the legal requirements okay. and so, uh, I'd like Anybody to make this. Amend your, would you like to amend your motion? Okay, thank you. I'd like to amend that motion to send these bids to the Public Works Department at, in conjunction with fire services and report back to the council. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to refer the bids back to the Public Works Department in conjunction with the fire services department to come back to this body with their recommendation. Anything on the question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. At this time in our agenda, we are open to public comment on any items that are on tonight's agenda. If there's anyone that cared to make a comment, please come to the microphone and give your name and address for the record. All right, the banner of 2601 Grand Avenue, Section 4, Council Bill 15. Dash 13, ordinance 15 dash 13, an ordinance amending chapter 8.08 .08, entitled litter control. I read where one of the commissioners is concerned about the survey ran by Public Works Department relative to the garbage collection portion of this ordinance. 
My question to this council is why is Public Works Department running the survey in the first place? When this body has the power and the duty to ascertain the public's opinion. There are many private survey firms that can do scientifically designed random sample surveys that would seem to be justified in this major policy decision. There also seems to be many unanswered questions relative to the garbage collection portion of this proposed ordinance. My other question for your pondering is, can the contract be extended for another three months? I have heard no discussion on this. How are those 95 gallon black cans that the city county is going to be provide going to be paid for? By taxpayers or by the patrons on their garbage bill? I have not heard clarification on either way of these, but either way, the people are going to have to pay for those garbage, black garbage collection cans. Who is going to compensate the residents for all those garbage cans that we now currently have? Who is going to pay for the modifications that the residents are going to have to make on the area where they presently have their garbage cans to accommodate these 95 gallon on wheel garbage cans. How many red tag warnings have actually been issued in the past year for uncovered and unsightly garbage cans? How many citations have been issued in the past year for uncovered, unsightly, uncared for garbage areas? If the city ends up doing the recycling, what other methods of recycling, collecting recyclables have been studied other than curbside? What's the engineer's estimate for the other methods other than curbside. When the wind blows, how far down the block are those empty black containers going to go? I lived in Modesto and I only had to chase one to the next door neighbor and the wind doesn't blow half as hard there as it does here. How long are those ugly black containers going to set in the streets? after the garbage is picked up. Thank you, Ed. Is there anyone else that would care to comment on any item on tonight's agenda? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move into the uh, body of our committee, the whole agenda. This is section three, communication number 14-505. Larry Driscoll, Principal East Middle School, Butte, Montana, requesting councils conduct a traffic study on Argyle Street in regard to pedestrian safety You'll notice that there are several older uh, agenda items on here. We have a suspense file and I took the opportunity to go through it last week and I pulled several of them out here. That, so 14 means it was last year and we uh, I thought it was time to revisit several of these and this is one of them. Um, <clears throat> I talked to Commissioner Sorge, this is his district. He recalls that at the time and also uh, Commissioner Palmer was involved in that conversation that there was some construction going on near East Middle School and they felt that they'd wait until that was done before uh, a study was done on the non uncontrolled intersections, which there are several, and that's all on the south side of the street. So I talked to the principal yesterday, and he said that he would like to um, resurrect this communication and put it back in the uh, Public Works Committee because the construction is near completion, school's in, and it's still a, a big issue, it's a problem uh, of safety for the students and for vehicles. So um, I'm going to ask that we hold this in advance and move it back to the Public Works Committee. I don't think that's necessary for a motion. We'll just put it over there and and ask uh, that we have a traffic study uh, conducted not only on Argyle Street, but there are several streets that have uncontrolled intersections. So if that's okay with everyone else, we'll do that. 
Uh, Section 4, Communication Number 14-540, R. Edward Banderob, 2601 Grand Avenue, Butte, Montana, requesting the Butte Silver Bow government send a letter to the USA National Congressional Delegation from Montana to request them to request the USA National Park Service perform a special resource study of the possibility of creating an NSP National Heritage Park and an NSP World Metalliferous Mining Heritage Interpretive Center in Butte, Montana. Whew, that was a mouthful. Um, I, uh, Ed, hang on one sec, okay? I'm just gonna defer to uh, Chief Executive Vincent because he was asked to send letters to the uh, congressional delegation. But uh, Ed, I'll go ahead, since it's your commu communication, if you'd like to make a comment first and then I will call on the Chief Executive, okay? Thank you. All right, Banner Rob, 2601 Grand Avenue. I would like to give you a brief summary on what has transpired between the time this communication was submitted and the current uh, today. This is a consumer flow job increasing initiative. As Jim Jarvis explained to you, there are basically two National Park Service programs that would bring federal monies into our community for historic preservation and heritage tourism promotion. The National Park Service, National Historical Parks, and the National Park Service, National Heritage Area. Both programs would provide jobs and give us a national recognition and prestige for the significant contribution Butte and Anaconda made to our national heritage and put us on the general national and international tourism maps. This has been Ellen Crane's dream for 27 years. The heritage tourism consultants that were here in 2012 recommended that the Greenway, that the National Park Service be involved in the Greenway. Fred Quivick came back to town and recommended that we follow the Kianah hybrid model of a national historical park with an administrative authority for distributing National Heritage Area funding. Jim Jarvis gave his report advising this council it would take about $30,000 plus to do the National Heritage Area Special Resource Study presentation for the National Park Service. Non-government funds can be found to do this study. Then this communication was submitted. An ex-official steering committee meeting was held where the Butte Silver Bowl CEO announced the Butte Silver Bowl would not put any funds into the feasibility study and he had to leave the room. I was challenged by those remaining to proceed with the National Heritage Area initiative from the previous Butte Historical Society communication where a communication was sent to the U.S. Congressional Delegation onto the National Park Service Director and return. I attended, I contacted Scott C. Executive Director of the Kiowena National Historical Park Advisory Commission, and Art Hutchinson and Greg Kendrick, Intermountain Regional National Park Service, National Historical Park, and National Heritage Area Project Directors located in Denver. They informed me that there are four primary issues before the Park Service 
will consider any such designation. One, strong congressional support. Two, strong community support. Three, a nationally significant heritage site or event. And four, a functioning 501c3 independent of the local government. I attended the Great Falls Grand Tour National Heritage Assessment Conference and have been advised by their commissioner that they have moved forward and formed their 501c3 administrative authority uh, committee or organization. A citizen task force met was and Jay Ellington, our then Parks and Rec Director, explained the importance of the National Park Service recognition and involvement in promoting our heritage. I, had ha I have had conferences with prospective participants in a national heritage area in Whitehall, Bozeman, Helena, Phillipsburg, and Anaconda. I have communicated with prospects in Great Falls, Missoula, <coughs> Dillon, Deer Lodge, Boulder, and others. Preliminary plans were considered for a Treasures of Western Montana National Heritage Area Initiative Assessment Conference. It was decided that without full support from this local government, that would be futile. Elizabeth Watson, the, the heritage tourism consultant that was here in 2010, when I asked, consulted with her, asked what is holding up the National Park Service involvement. We have new HPOs, and Parks and Rec directors. Therefore, I would ask that you amend this communication to delete the word heritage from National Heritage Park and insert the correct terminology so it reads National Historical Park for the Greenway consideration <coughs> and refer this communication to our new historic preservation officer and to the new director of parks and recreation for their consideration and recommendation back to this council. Either holding it in this committee of the whole or referring the communication to your economic development committee as this is an economic development initiative. Thank you. Yeah. Chief Executive Vincent, do you want to comment on, on what you've done? And then I will call on our HPO, our Historic Preservation Officer. Yes, Madam Chair. And I would thank Mr. Bandrop for that uh, update because um, I guess for the most part, I believe, uh, so we we did send a letter. I sent a letter to then Senator Tester, Senator John Walsh, and uh, U.S. Representative uh, Steve Danes in April of 2014 uh, asking what was directed in this communication. We um, saw letters from from those uh, offices submitted to the National Park Survey. We uh, got information back at that time, which we then used to convene a group that included Mr. Bandrob as well as uh, the Archives uh, and Archives Board, as well as the Butte Historical Society. World Museum of Mining, pretty much all of the, the local players that would be necessary in garnering the, the support needed to take the next step on this. Commissioner Palmer actually uh, uh, helped me uh, in, in convening all of these these groups and he might want to weigh in when I'm done with um, the synopsis of that. And I think it, it, was a, it was a productive meeting. It was a 
pretty long meeting, a couple hours. I wasn't able to stay for the entirety of it, but certainly the majority of it. And I believe at that point it was, and I, I guess I would say that I don't ever recall this $30,000 number that Mr. Bandarab refers to. I do remember a couple hundred thousand dollar number that was uh, relayed to us by the National Park Service on what it would cost to do a uh, special resource study, which is um, which would come after the the uh, legislation was passed by our delegation in Washington D.C. There's also a feasibility study option that we could choose to take on 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 our own, I, and that might be where that that number came from. But again, I don't recall it being a number that low. Long story short, I think it was a consensus that at this point in time, not uh, uh, withstanding the the recognition that there was some potential economic benefit to be gained by a national heritage park uh, or national historic park or whatever the proper designations were designation for our our area it was decided at this time that the local government would not be the best group to be spending its limited time and uh, money resources to that end and it was at that point uh, that i believe mr bandrab uh, was told that if he could continue to take the the energy from the the organizations that were at that meeting as well as uh, generate additional support and move forward and then bring bring it back to us at a later date we would certainly reconsider it and so here we uh, here we sit tonight i i was aware of a of a couple of uh uh, groups that Mr. Bandrob had met with, namely the the Great Falls Heritage Area efforts, as well as uh, our paths happened to cross with the new Historic Preservation Officer when Mary and I were over in Anaconda, and so um, we we were able to, to listen in and take part in the discussion that Mr. Bandrob had with the Anaconda Historic uh, Commission. But at this point, I don't think anything has changed. Um, I don't see the, the grassroots uh, support and effort in moving forward and spending staff or money resources at this time. But again, I would uh, leave it up to this body and the grassroots effort that is still, um, um, you know, building hopefully out there that uh, we could do this. And I would uh, close by um, before turning it over to Mary, if she wants to weigh in that uh, I think a lot of the consensus decision that was reached at the meeting, I believe it would have been in December when we had all those groups together was uh, hinged on Ellen Crane's testimony that she had gone through this process, um, a very laborious process and passionate process, at, at which point um, we were deemed ineligible for any of these designations that were, were being sought in this communication in the late 1990s. And it was uh, Ellen's um, professional opinion that, that it probably wasn't worth us moving forward and spending additional time and resources on at this time. So. Uh, Commissioner Palmer, I don't know if you have anything to add to it. Uh. Commissioner Palmer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Chief Executive, that's pretty thorough report on what happened. Um, it was left up to uh, Mr. Banderob to go out and garner some uh, grassroots support, grassroots support from outlying communities because at the time we were talking about a regional historic area and we thought it would be better to wait and see if the other communities, uh, the outlying areas would uh, join in. I think there is some merit to what Ed is proposing here, but I think that um, it is going to take some outlying support from outlying areas. So until we see more of that, I think that we uh, should just wait and let them keep working on that. Uh, Mary, can I call on you as our historic preservation officer? And I ask that you would just give us your professional take on this and what you maybe uh, can see in the future that where we can take what we've done so far and move forward with another, uh, maybe possibly a different tact or an avenue. Yes, Chairman Shaw and members of the council. Um, you know, certainly I'm a big proponent of the national parks, and I think this could be a great thing for Butte, but I just don't think we're quite ready to move forward on it right now. Um, I was around in the late 90s, even though I wasn't an active participant in the original application, but I know it took a tremendous effort 
it certainly, you know, the historic preservation officer played a lead role, but it took a lot of other staff time as well. Alan Crane devoted, you know, countless hours to it and the planning department. I think right now we have a lot of big things and I feel like I have a lot of big things in front of me. I have the comprehensive historic preservation plan. I have the regional historic preservation plan that have set out goals that you know we're re working really hard to accomplish and get some good work done and and there are things that will definitely when the time is ripe and the time is right to move forward on a national heritage that will benefit us you know getting our getting our mine yards squared away securing them you know make seeing seeing everything that we have and getting all our artifacts are secure we need to there's some really important things that we need to get done in the next two years and so i would just hate to see a lot of staff time be diverted away from some very important projects that we have in mind towards this i think we'll be ready you know maybe three to five years we would be ready to tackle something like this but it is a tremendous effort it's and it's going to be a huge commitment on the part of this county and we do have to build up some ground grassroots support because I think you can see right here tonight we don't have it's not here right now. So thank you. Any questions for Mary from the council? Okay. Commissioner Foley. Hearing all that, I'll make a motion <laughs> to place communication 14 540 on file. Note in, note in place on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to note. <clears throat> communication number 14-50 and place this on file. Is there anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Ed, for all your efforts. Section 5, communication number 15-251, Henry and Colleen Klabakar, 2221 South Main Street, Butte, Montana, requesting council's authorization to purchase county-owned property under the adjacent landowner policy uh, there is another communication further down the, the list here that is asking for the county attorney to prepare a resolution indeed. But uh, Commissioner Walker and I talked about this and he has been in contact with the Klavikars and I would call on him to just give us an update. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, in visiting with the Klavikars, uh, there are some issues that need to be resolved before they want to move forward with this. They still are interested in it, but they would like us to hold it in the Committee of the Whole for at least two more weeks. I would make that motion. Okay, um, just uh, there are two items on here. One is the original request, and the second one is to ask the county attorney to draft a resolution per uh, section 12, actually the last item. So I don't know, I was gonna we consider combining, cross-referencing one to the other and then keep it held all together. Yeah. Okay, and it's still uh, holding the dance. So uh, okay. my rec I, would I would entertain a motion to cross-reference as I motion on there. Okay, you got it. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I would make a motion to cross-reference uh, communication 15-251 with communication 15-415 place on file. We have a motion and a second to cross-reference communication 15-251 with communication 15-415 and place this one on file. Is there anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and then we'll continue uh, discussing the, the last item later down on the agenda. Section 6, communication 15-264, Francis P. McGee, 125 West Granite Street, Butte, Montana, requesting council work with the residents in the Clarks Park area to enforce noise restrictions, pro prohibitions against fall from the park, and enforce the 10 p.m. closure time. Uh, Brendan is on vacation. Actually, he's at the National Folk Festival in North Carolina. He's a pretty happy guy, I think, out there. And uh, we just decided to hold this in advance. I did talk to J.P. Gallagher, our Parks and Recs director, and he is in the process of working on a couple of things that he thinks that might help mitigate the situation here. But with your uh, uh, permission, I'd just like to continue to hold uh, communication 15-6. 264 in advance until uh, we meet again in two weeks. Section 7, communication 15 356, Kenneth and Michelle Palmer, 936 Serelda Street, Butte, Montana, requesting council's authorization to purchase county owned property under the adjacent landowner policy. I, I happen to see that a letter is going to come through in our next regular meeting from 
uh, Rob Makarowski's office in reference to this, so we'll just hold this in advance until such time. Section 8, communication number 15-358, Brenda McDonough, Butte Silver Bow Commissioner, uh, District Number 8, requesting a review of zoning ordinance, re ordinances regarding the keeping of horses on property within the city limits. Uh, again, Brendan is not here this evening, so I understand he is looking into uh, aspects of the ordinance, and um, we will hold that in advance. <coughs> Section 9, communication number 15-411, Kristen Rosa, Administrator, Tax Increment Financial Financing Industri Industrial District, the TIFID, requesting council's authorization authorization to hold a bid opening tonight for dust control equipment. Uh, we need to have that resubmitted and properly uh, published. So um, I would entertain a motion from our my vice chair tonight. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to place communication number 15-411 on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to place communication 15-411 on file. Is there anything on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Section 10, communication number 15-413, Jeffrey L. Miller, Director of <coughs> Silver Bow Fire Services, requesting council's authorization to hold a bid opening tonight in regards to a new 2015-16-1500 GPM custom Class A pumper. And uh, Commissioner Walker, we had that bid opening. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to place communication number 15-413 on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to place communication 15-413 on file. Is there anything further on the question? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Section 11, communication number 15-414. Patsy Coates, Property Specialist, Butte Silver Bow Land Records Office, requesting council's authorization to hold a tax deed sale public auction on September 16th, 2015, and to ask the county attorney to prepare a resolution authorizing the sale of the properties to be final read at the September 16th, 2015 meeting. We will hold that in advance until next Wednesday. Section 12, communication 15-415, Robert A. Makarowski, Director Butte Silver Bow Land Office, requesting council's authorization for the sale of county-owned property under the adjacent landowner policy, and for council to ask the county attorney to prepare the resolution and deed for the transfer of the property. Commissioner Walker, we just continue to hold that in advance. Okay. I, would, I would make a motion to continue to hold communication 15-415. Uh, 415? 415. Yeah, we don't need to make a motion. We'll just hold it in advance. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we have reached the point in our uh, agenda for any public comment on any public matter not on tonight's agenda. If there's anybody that would care to make a comment, please come to the microphone on <coughs> either side. They're both equally there. And uh, just give us your name and address for the record. My name is Todd Brown. This is Jade Wetmore. Our address is 801 West Copper Street in Butte, Montana. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of council. We are here today to speak about a decision this council made on September 2nd to overturn the recommendation of the developers packet review committee for the property at 208 South Washington Street. Our reason for being here tonight is that we feel we were treated unfairly by this council and we would also like to set the record straight about our passion for the Washington Street property. We listened to the audio of the council meeting that was held here on September 2nd, and we feel that we were misjudged and were not given the opportunity to defend ourselves. It was not brought to our attention that there would be further debate about the redevelopment of this property, which is why we were not present at the meeting. If we were aware that our names would be mentioned over eight times and that our caring and passion for this project and this community would be called to question and that Mr. Moylan would be here to misconstrue our proposal, we would have been here. When we started this process, we did not realize that this would be a political fight. We simply wanted to save and restore these two unique historic cottages in our community. We were under the impression that the best proposal for this property would be awarded the chance to buy it, and that is not what happened. Your decision was based solely on what would be best for Mr. Moylan and this council, 
not what would be best for this property and the community of Butte. We have successfully run a historic renovation and remodeling business in this town for six years now, and we have fallen in love with the history and architecture here. Saving the historic structures in this town has not only been our job, but also it's our passion. This is what we do on a daily basis, and we love to do it, and we're good at it. Please do not mistake our absence from city council meetings for lack of caring. We are private people, and speaking in front of an audience is not what we are good at. We are highly invested in this community, and we have shown it through the numerous buildings we have restored here, the organizations that we have sponsored, and the events that we have volunteered for. Jade is also very proud to be a graduate of Montana Tech. Since financing of this project was brought up several times during your discussion, I would just like to clarify that despite what Mr. Moylan said, we did state in our proposal that the first phase of this project would be funded out of our own pocket. By getting a loan for the rest of the project, we would have been supporting our local bank and the community members and employees. Projects like this are the principal way in which banks earn income. <coughs> Once again, we just want to set the record straight about the passion we have for this project and this community. We hope that in the future you will make decisions that are based on the best interest of Butte. We would like to thank the members of the Developers Packet Review Committee for their time with this matter and for recognizing that we would be best qualified to redevelop this property. Thank you guys for taking the time to listen to us tonight. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Any further comment on any item that was not on tonight's agenda? Okay, well, seeing none. Anything else to come before us this evening? Any announcements or Commissioner Walker? Yes, Judiciary Committee will reconvene immediately after. All right, thank you. Uh, a motion to adjourn? <coughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Right. A motion to adjourn. All in favor? All right. All right. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matt. Your update on that. Oh, oh that. Oh, it's, it's just a policy with the that time because of so that is their amazing yeah, I didn't see it, but it's